Hello and welcome. In our previous tutorial, we were able to add our leaflet map. And in this tutorial, we are going to see how we can uh, incorporate our health facilities uh, points. You can be able to add them on the map. So as a, as a first step, I realized that I had not installed the Tritia uh, extension. Or if it's there, I've probably not configured it. So let me just install it. It helps formatting uh, formatting of the code. So remember in our previous tutorial, uh, in our previous steps, you are using black format. So Pretty also comes in handy when it comes to formatting uh, HTML and also J JavaScript uh, code. So I'm just going to configure it using Shift Control P, my keyboard, and then I'm going to configure it to use Pretty. You notice that some uh, like the code has kind of changed. Okay, so the next step will be we need to use some icons on our map. So I feel like it's best to uh, best to use some different icons rather than the default leaflet marker icons. And uh, because of that, we're going to I, I have downloaded an icon from uh, the flat flat icon uh, website. I'm going to share the link uh, for it. Uh, so this is the icon though. This is it looks like. It's an icon for hospital or something like that. So I'm just going to add it in the public folder because it will be publicly accessed. Uh, let me just do a drag and drop. Yeah, so let me just rename it. Uh, maybe I can call it And uh, the next step will be uh, we need to import uh, some items, some more uh, things. So from Leaflet, uh, we can also import uh, icon. So I'm just going to add that import one here. Uh, because we are going to tell it to refer to these, uh, the PNG that we have just added as our icon. And then we are going to add other imports. So we are going to import the uh, Exios. I remember we installed Exios at the beginning of this uh, tutorial. And then we're also going to import the use uh, SWR, which we also installed at the beginning of this tutorial. And then from Bootstrap, we are going to be using uh, two things. We are going to be using an alert and a spinner. So the alert and the spinner, they, uh, we are going to import them from React Bootstrap and their work is to ensure that we, uh, what happens when you are loading the map, let's say you are loading very many points, so then the work of the alert is to, a uh, spinner, sorry, is to keep on showing that uh, there's a process that is running in the background. And then the, the other thing is the alert. So the alert, the work of the alert is to, let's say we have an issue when we are loading our map. So if we are, we have an issue when we are loading our map, then uh, we can have an alert that says, you, you know, we have a problem or something like that. So let's now get down into writing our code. So we are going to create a constant here. And maybe we can call it icon, uh, which will be an instance of the icon from leaflet. And uh, we are going to add some properties here. So uh, one of the properties is the icon uh, URL, uh, which will refer to the health.png that we have created. Uh, help. And then we also have the Uh, maybe we can also because this icon i believe it's big let's see how large it is i'm not sure about the size but let's just set set it to have some but so icon size uh, we can set this to maybe uh, 30 by something like 
uh, 60. Let's see, we are going to see how it's going to look like. And then we'll also add an anchor for this icon. Oops. Icon anchor. So we can give it something like uh, 25 to be uh, an array of length and width. So we'll add it to 25 and uh, maybe we can set this to 65. So I'm just setting some values so that we, we are going to see how it's going to look like. So we have the shadow anchor. Uh, we do not have a shadow URL. So I'll just put a pop-up uh, anchor. And for this one, you can uh, give it some values like minus three and minus uh, maybe seven, five. Then we can save. So we have created our icon. Uh, the next step will be creating our uh, variable for, fetch, for fetching. So in this case, we can just call it uh, fetcher. And... Uh, It will uh, take the URL as a parameter, and then we have, uh, it will make use of Exios. Uh, get a request, so it will be getting the request from our URL, which is our argument there. And then we will uh, get the data, which we call, the, we call it trees, maybe for result or something. And then we'll add the, our interest will be getting the data. So it will be a real called data. And I uh, can close that. So let's see. Yeah. So the next step will be now inside our <coughs> app component, <coughs> we will add uh, below these. Uh, variables we will add a variable for fetching. So in this case, we will be having uh, we will be getting data, and uh, we'll also add another item here to handle the error because there's a possibility that we may not be able to get, if you are requesting from a, a backend and there is no connectivity or there is some sort of error. So this is where the SWR comes in. So SWR takes our first argument as the endpoint. And uh, in this case, we are going to make reference to the endpoint that we had created in our facilities. Uh, let me look at the URL. So we have this. So this will be our endpoint from the urls.py of the application. And uh, we need to add that. Then we will, of course, take the result.data, which will be in a JSON format. Uh, sorry. Which we should now make use of the fetch. So one of the reasons why I have not added the fetch inside the app component. Remember React, every time you call the React application, it re-renders. Oh, it will, so it will keep on calling this fetch and we do not want to do that. We just want to call it once and uh, then this does the rest. Okay. So we'll also create our another variable, you can call it const facilities, which will be our facility data. So in this case, we have, uh, remember we have this data here. So we will take our data. And uh, basically we are saying if we do not, if we get our data and we do not have an error, then have, our data. Okay, then the next step will be what happens when we have an error. We need to handle our error. So uh, if we have an error, then we are going to make use of the alert. So we're just, we're just going to return 
uh, a lot with some properties. So we have a lot. Uh, we can just close it. And then inside here we can add a variant. So we have various variants from Bootstrap. So we have danger, success, info. Uh, you can make use of the reference to the React Bootstrap or even to the Bootstrap documentation for this. So in this case, I'm going to use danger because if there's an error, then it will show in red. Basically, that's what I'm doing. Then I can just set it to, oh, no. Um, we have a problem. Uh, and then yeah, and then we can end the alert. Yeah, so this is what basically this is what it returns. And uh, in a case where we do not have the data, uh, we can also do something about it. So I'll just add a return. And then. Inside this return, I'm going to create uh, the spinner. Remember, we imported our spinner earlier. And for this one, you can just close it. So our spinner will uh, take various uh, parameters. So allow, just allow me to add them here. Uh, yeah, I forgot to close these brackets. Yeah, so basically this is what we have for the spinner. And uh, we can just save. So it's, we have an animation, which will be a border. Uh, we have also used a variant of danger like they are in the alert. And then its role is a status. Then we have the style, uh, the inline kind of, think of this as an inline uh, style. So now inside our map container, we need to make use of these things that we have created up here. And uh, after the after the importing or after uh, importing our, our tile layer, uh, we need to add various other other items. So our first item, uh, we will be a map. Sorry, it will be uh, the markers that we are going to be using. So we will make use of the JavaScript uh, map function uh, whose uh, work is to iterate over each element of an array. So in this case, our points are, in, are many and they exist in an array, uh, in a JSON array. So we are going to loop over or iterate over each element and get the uh, values like the coordinates and other properties. And uh, we'll also be making use of uh, uh, these uh, syntax, this JSX syntax, uh, whereby we are, since we are writing uh, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript expression, we're going to add it inside these uh, curly braces, as you can see there. So we will begin by uh, calling our, uh, remember we created our facilities, which we have not used. That's why it is kind of like grayed out. So we will add facilities, facilities uh, dot map, or rather dot features dot map, and uh, we will uh, call uh, create a callback function, and then the, in the inside here we will just write facility, and then we will. Uh, Create a callback, and inside here now, this is where we are going to be using our marker. Uh, so let's close our marker. And uh, the next step will be so, since we are calling an array of elements or an array of items, we need to have a, a key. So the key uh, will be uh, equals to. Uh, so inside our data, I think it would be nice to see how our data looks like in JSON so that you can understand what we are doing here. So I'm just going to call the API. Yeah, so we have uh, features. So if you look at uh, the features, we have features.id type 
uh, ID is one of the items, type, uh, geometry, and then we also have properties. Uh, so inside the properties, we have something called name. So I think uh, we are going to use the name as our uh, key. So it will be facility dot properties properties dot name and then uh, we need to have the marker requires another uh, parameter which is a position so the position will be our x y coordinates so in this case it will be facility uh, dot geometry Uh, let me just refer to my uh, JSON. So it will be facility dot geometry dot uh, coordinates. So this is a this will be the y value, or rather the x value. Uh, remember, we are calling it in latitude and longitude. You can refer to the this to the uh, leaflet documentation. So let me just copy this, and then I'm gonna paste it. Then this one is going to call the first value uh, index. So these are index indices. So I'll remove that. And then the other parameter that is going to be taking. So the position should actually be an array. It's an array of coordinates. So after that, we are going to add. Uh, so uh, what happens if you have markers? So you want when you click your markers, you can be able to see a pop-up of something. So the best way to do it is uh, now this one is an event. So we need to create a non-click event uh, below here. Yeah, so we'll have a non-click, which will be equals to. So when you click the marker, what happens? So this will be to so i'm going to create a set active facility i'm going to explain this in a little bit so we have to create a, a state uh, remember we have I'm not sure if you have yeah, this use state hook so we are going to, to add a, a state because this is the state uh, management and uh, we can add our facility inside here Uh, so let me ensure that I'm using prettier. Inside our app component, above here, we are going to add our state. So initially, the state of a point or the state of a, of any marker will just be null when we are, we have rendered our item in the first uh, during our first step. So uh, we will create an array. So we have an active. Uh, facility which is an active point or an active marker and then we'll have, we'll have a set uh, active facility uh, which will be equals to we'll now make use of the use state use state hook for react and uh, by default this will be null and you can save that so that is what we are using here so whenever somebody clicks then it sets that uh, item as an active item so the next, uh, the final thing I think inside the marker that we will be having will be an icon. So let's have our icon, uh, which will be, sorry, which will be equals to uh, our icon. So remember we have created an icon uh, up here. Well, yeah, we have this icon. So this is what is being called, and we have exported it. So it can be, we can be able to call it anyway. Uh, so we have finished our marker or our properties for the marker. So inside our marker, remember we need to have a pop-up, a leaflet pop-up. So we will create pop-up, and you can close it. And then our pop-up will also have a bunch of uh, 
parameters. So we have our first item, which is position. So for the position, I'm just gonna copy this and paste it inside here. And then we have something else, which is uh, uh, on close. which will be equals to call back so we will create our own close and then our own close will have uh, we will also take the will return the state of the point to uh, to null and then after that uh, we have something else. Yeah, so inside here we can create inside our pop up. You don't just want, we won't see anything if you click our pop up. So we need to have something that shows, you know, some information about the facility, the health facility in this case. So I'm just going to create some uh, title here. Let's maybe I can use a heading element. So inside here I can just add. Uh, uh, Facility uh, dot properties uh, dot name. And then uh, let me see if there's something else I can add. So let's look at uh, facility. Uh, maybe I can add a P element paragraph. it and then inside here I'm going to add uh, facility dot properties just copy this and uh, one of the fields is amenity I'm not sure if all have amenity but in, uh, nevertheless this is so it's going to display the facility name and the facility amenity uh, so we seem to have an issue here Oh, let me remove that. Yeah, I've forgotten. This also should be the position should be an array. Okay. I don't know why my pretty is always having to configure it manually. Yeah, so I think we have uh, all the items. Uh, let me just uh, let's have a quick overview of what you've done. So we have set our state for the marker. Uh, we have set, set the default position. We have set the default zoom of the map, and then we have also set uh, fetcher that uh, gets our health facilities from the backend, and uh, we have also these uh, facilities. And then we have also checked if there is an error anywhere. And then we have added something to check if there is an error. And uh, uh, if there is an error or if the data cannot be found or cannot be accessed, then we have this spinner that is going to show up. And then we have our map container with all the properties inside. And then we have uh, this map function that which we are looking through each point from the backend or from our uh, API. And then we have an on-click uh, function. So when you click, what happens? It uh, sets the facility as active and displays uh, some of these uh, properties, which is the name and the amenity. And then when you click the closing of that pop-up, then it's going to return the marker or the, uh, to, the, to its default. So this is what we have. So let's see, let me just save. And then we can just, I believe the API is uh, running. And uh, one of the tools that you can use to uh, maybe in your API uh, development and what have you, you can use Postman. And I have it installed. Let me open it up. So this is a, a Postman. So I've called the API, and uh, this is what it gives us. It gives us the points and the, uh, all the points and the details of the coordinates. 
and uh, prettified it so you can see the connection here uh, http code 200 so it means that it's okay so let's uh, now run our application uh, so we'll navigate into the folder the front end or client folder in this case i'll just do a clear and ensure that i've saved my file and then uh, i can run npm run Okay, so let's try opening our map. So when we run our application, this is what we get. Uh, you remember I've talked about the uh, the so this is what we have when we run our application. Uh, remember we talked about the spinner or rather the alert rather. Uh, so whenever I reload my application, let me just do a reload. Uh, we are going to sort out these error. So you've noticed there's something that is quickly uh, kind of running. So let's, uh, let us look at uh, why we are having this error. Uh, just checking the console. Yeah, so it's saying this is not found. Oh yeah, so it's trying to call uh, this uh, the its own. It's calling itself. So I need to add the full, uh, you know, the port or whichever the link that or rather the link to the backend. Yeah. So I'll just add. Thousand. So let's see what happens when we reload our application. Yeah, so after adding, I've added the full URL for the API. Uh, let me see, let's see what happens on our browser. So we get another error which states that uh, facilities is not found. Okay, yeah, I can see from my uh, ID that this facilities, facilities, so I've not kind of named these properly. It should be facilities. And uh, so, so here facilities. So after a few edits and uh, some refactoring, uh, we are able to load our map. Uh, let me just start the uh, server using npm uh, run dev, and uh, this is how it looks like on the browser. So it's fetching the data. Yeah, so this is, these are the health facilities. And you will notice when you click on any of, the, of them, you'll find that they displays a pop-up that you can close. Uh, if you click somewhere else on the map, it also automatically closes. So this is the, uh, the state, uh, the new state that you are using, whereby if you click a point, it sets it to be active. And uh, if you close, it closes. Or if you, okay, additionally, equally, if you click on somewhere else, it is restored to its initial state, which was null. So the pop-up disappears. Yeah. So yeah. So when you zoom in, you will realize that there are the areas like here that have very many points. Uh, the idea there are third-party plugins that you can use, but we are not going to apply them here. That you can use to like there's one called Marker Cluster. You can when you zoom in, it kind of uh, clusters these points and declusters them as you continue zooming into your map. So we have been able to load this. And uh, of course, our backend is our API of Django that uh, serves these uh, location points to the front end. So yeah, so we have been able to run or to configure our client application. And uh, in the next step, we are going to containerize it using uh, Docker. Uh, don't forget to like. and. Uh, can share with your colleagues or someone who may find it beneficial to them and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel for whenever i create uh, new content uh, thank you for watching let's meet in the next video